Good morning, Northway. Welcome to worship. Whether you are here in the room or joining us online, we are glad that you have chosen to take this time to worship the Lord as we gather, as we celebrate our freedom to worship, uh, and we seek God's wisdom to secure that freedom for all people. Uh, as we come today, we've got flowers here. Uh, the flowers that are on the baptistry are in memory of Roy Wilson, Wanda Hickman's brother, and his services were yesterday. So we hold Wanda and Jerry and the family in our prayers as well. <clears throat> and I didn't look. Uh, where are the flowers? I don't see it. Okay, no dedication. That's why, that's why I don't see it. Um, we hope that you will stay for uh, the lunch, the picnic, Freedom Picnic that's after the service uh, today, it will be indoors and outdoors, depending on where is more comfortable for you. Uh, I will say that the water slides are outdoors, so um, that's, where the, that's where the real fun is taking place. I'm looking forward to seeing Pastor Andy take a good run at that, <clears throat> um, so be outside uh, for that. Um, as we gather together to worship today, we remind ourselves that Christ is with us. Would you stand as we join together in our call to worship? <clears throat> Friends, let us worship God today, for God is great. Let us worship God today, for God is good. Let us worship God today. Let us worship God.
You may be seated. As we gather together to pray, you no doubt have things on your heart and mind, things you've seen in the news, on social media, things that are happening in your circle of care, things you're aware of in our communities. I invite you to bring those things forward in your heart. I invite you to consider laying your hands, palms up on your knees or on your lap as an expression to God that you are lifting these things up, that God might take them from you and hold them, and that God might put in their place the gift of love, the gift of peace, the gift of grace, the gift of mercy, the gift of joy. Let us pray. God of all creation, of heaven, earth, and sky, we give you thanks. We pause simply to praise you, not because of what you've done for us first and foremost, but because you are worthy of our praise. We join in the praises that are continually rising before you from the saints who went before us and even from the very creation. God, we come to you with our hearts full. Full of the burdens of human life the cares and the trials and tribulations, as well as full of the hopes and longings and joys and expectations. God, we grieve this day for those families, multiple generations of families who traveled because of hope and aspiration, because their homes were not safe and stable, their countries and communities not safe and stable. And so they came in hope and expectation. They heard the poem at the base of the Statue of Liberty, and they came and they were carelessly and recklessly neglected and abandoned. Fifty three dead in the back of a truck trying to get to the good. We pray also for stability in those home countries that people wouldn't have to feel that their only choice was to uproot, to go somewhere else and start over. And God, we know that's just one story of one set of families that represents millions of families around the world in multiple locations. We do hear of wars and rumors of wars, O oh God. And so we pray for peace. And God, we pray that this nation might fully live into the aspirations of our forebears, the mothers and fathers of our country who had such great hopes and dreams, who they themselves did not live up to the aspirations of their thoughts and words. And we still have not. And God, we pray that you would help us not only to secure those freedoms for ourselves and our posterity, but for all of your creation. Lead us and guide us, O oh God, that we might be and do all that you desire to and ask of us, empowered by the strength of your Holy Spirit. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen would invite the children to come for the children's moment. Are there any little ones among us? Russell Church is coming down. Oh, no, you weren't. Um, <clears throat> all right, come on, man. It's just you and me. That's all right.
Is Forrest coming? Hey, there we go. There we go. We're just being, uh, just being a little slow. Y'all come and have a seat. There's one. There they are. There they are. Y'all, y'all sit in that semicircle out on the carpet so you're facing me, please. Thank you, oh, little man. Yay. Hey, sweet friend. Hey, girl. So I just got back from church camp. Have any of y'all been to church camp before? Yeah? So, oh, okay, good. Forrest has been also. So you all are all going to get to go to church camp real soon. Uh, So you could actually go next summer. Uh, Grand camp. Actually, grand camp is coming up. So if you can talk your grandparents into taking you. Grandparents, you can take your little ones to uh, grand camp. Um, It's pretty awesome. Uh, and then family camp is Memorial Day weekend usually, so it'll come back around real soon. Um, but we go to camp. Our church goes with other churches to Disciples Crossing, which is about an hour and a half from here, near a town called Athens. And it is a place that since the late 1940s, uh, children and youth and adults from our churches, Northway and others, have gone there, and congregations, Northway I don't think has done it in a minute or two, um, but I know Northway used to do uh, all church retreats down at the camp, and I hope that we get back to that real soon. You can go there as a family. You can go and you can rent a cabin, and you can stay as a family, and some people do that on first Monday weekend. But that is a place where you get to be out in nature and you get to sing songs, and you get to do crafts, and you get to play in the pool and in the lake, uh, and you get to do archery and play sports and do all kinds of fun things, and then you get to be outdoors for worship. We usually come in here for worship, or you go to Worship Rocks, but you get to go outside under the stars for worship, and you get to look at the lake in the morning for worship, and it is an amazing time. And I want you guys to remember, part of why camp is so important is it because it reminds us that our faith doesn't just happen here when we're at church. Our faith can happen everywhere we go. And we can come together with people we've never met before, and within a day or two we can form Christian community And we can share our faith and we can share our lives. So as you guys are learning and growing about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, keep in mind that Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Thank you for helping. Jesus said, let the little children come to me because of such as this is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God belongs to you, the children. And the rest of us, our job is to pay attention to y'all so that we can learn from you how to be followers of Jesus and how to love the world in Jesus' name. What he said. (laughs) Amen and amen. Thanks for coming down. We will not have worship rocks today, so you get to stay with your families. You get to stay with your families for worship this morning. So thanks for coming down. It's good to see you. You tell them. You tell them, buddy. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for love. Thank you for hope. And thank you for my life. Amen. good time for us to stand and pass the peace to one another. We do this as a part of our communion celebration to remind us that we are reconciled with God and with one another at this table.
Union Hymn, number 393, One Bread, One Body. How does the Lord's table look today? Certainly it looks like this, but I, I think it also looks like a bedside table in a hospital room where a young adult grandson feeds his grandmother lunch as she recovers from a stroke. I think it might look like the small circular table in a coffee shop where two coworkers in conflict with one another choose to have coffee together and talk to each other rather than about each other. I do indeed believe that the Lord's table looks like a table at a dining hall in a church camp where a timid, anxious, first-time camper finds a place that they learn to call home. Here at this Lord's table, we serve a small piece of bread and a small cup but I think the Lord's table serves sandwiches made at the life shelter. I think the Lord's table includes hummus and pita, where people step across the comfort zones and interact with people from a different culture. I, I believe the Lord's table even includes the imaginary pieces of food that a three-year-old serves to her parents and that parent greedily eats it up and gobbles it and declares it is the best meal they have ever had. Our prayer as we gather around this Lord's table is that it would be a rehearsal for the way we encounter the Lord's table throughout our week, that we would approach each meal with gratitude and see in each meal companion a beloved child of God. On the night our Lord was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious and loving God, we gather here at your table this morning, grateful for all the blessings you granted us. Above all, we thank you for setting us free from the bondage of sin and letting us walk with you in newness of life through the death and resurrection of your only son, Jesus Christ. In the breaking and sharing of this bread, the emblem of the body of Jesus, 
broken for us on the cross of Calvary. We feel your love and your presence. This morning we renew our resolve to let go of control on our lives and to yield to your spirit because only when we abide with you and live in obedience to you can we experience true freedom and peace in you. Yet we acknowledge that we are not strong enough to do any of this on our own. So we humbly ask you to let your indwelling spirit guide us to walk in your ways. In Jesus' holy name, amen. In like manner, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood. As often as you drink it, remember me. God, God of power and God of love, we come to you today with joy in our hearts and we kneel before you in praise and thanksgiving. Your power created us, your gift of love redeems us. How grateful we are for miracles that only you can perform. As we drink of this cup, we visualize our Lord holding a similar cup giving thanks, having his disciples drink from it, and explaining to them that it was as his blood shed for many. They could not then understand that he would suffer and die on the cross, and that this sacrifice would mean salvation for so many. How then can we understand? We know only that this miracle of life and death is indeed true. Through faith, we accept that nothing is impossible for you, Lord, whether it is in the healing of the body or in inter eternal life. At this moment, we feel your loving presence surround us, and we thank you for the gift of life. Be with us as we share this wonderful truth. We pray today in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The body of Christ was given for us. Amen. The blood of Christ was shed for us. Amen. This is the greatest meal we have, so let us offer the greatest prayer we know by praying as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reminder, if you have not done so, to um, take out your attendance and guest info card that's in the pew pocket in front of you. Hopefully, you can uh, let us know your attendance if your information 
contact information has changed, you can use that. And then on the back is our prayer request info. And these uh, we ask you to place in the offering plate as those are passed here in just a moment along with your offering if you're doing that that way. Um, you can also register your attendance, obviously, with the QR code there in your bulletin. <clears throat> as I just mentioned, I just got back from camp. I was there with our 8th graders um, and 7th graders, actually. Uh, we're in the process of including younger folks in that particular camp. Uh, how many of you have been to Disciples Crossing for any reason, for any event? Okay, a little more than, little more than half the folks. Um, some of you for family camp or grand camp, some of you for church retreat. Uh, some of you grew up going to camp and now you're sending your kids or even your grandkids to camp. Um, <clears throat> for those of us uh, who are fortunate like I was to grow up in a stable family um, with both parents and make it all the way through and didn't really have a lot of crisis in my life, camp is great. Um, for kids who weren't so fortunate, who aren't so fortunate, camp literally saves lives. Uh, one of the kids in my small group who I knew was challenged with some stuff at home, some of which I didn't know what it was, and I said, are you looking forward to going home? Uh, and as if quoting Harry Potter, he said, I'm not going home, not really. This is home. It was his first time to be at camp. And just as Andy said, right, this is home. You can provide that for kids. Uh, and one of the ways that we do that, Northway has already given a $20,000 gift uh, and is about to give um, an additional $30,000 gift uh, that's a matching grant. Uh, and that, come, that money is coming from the foundation. You can match. Uh, you, your dollar can be matched that you give personally or as a household with money out of that $30,000. Um, the camp, as you might imagine, after a couple of years of pandemic, has struggled financially because we haven't had regular revenue. Uh, and we're operating on a shoestring, and we really need all the money we can raise. So please share this information with the people that you know that love and care about camp, or love and care about kids, uh, or teenagers or young adults. So it's, this is super, super important and a wonderful opportunity for Northway to be a witness and a leader uh, among the churches in our region. So I hope that you will do that. Uh, the second thing I want to lift up this morning is our community garden dedication. Uh, if you haven't been out there recently, I hope that you will go. If you were there the first week or two, it's such a dramatic change and such an amazing place. Um, and again, people's lives are being saved. People are being nourished. Little ones who don't have access uh, the way many of us do to fresh produce um, are getting that, and seniors and so on the 16th at 10 a.m. down at the Greater Garth Chapel AME Church property, we will gather together with our new friends uh, to celebrate and to give thanks for the bounty of God's creation and blessing. So I hope you will mark your calendar for that as well. We have many ways that we give. Uh, among those are financially, and here at Northway you can give in these ways you can give online, you can give through an app and texting, you can give here in the church office during the week and by mail, and of course during worship you can give uh, as the offering trays are passed. Let us now receive the morning offering. me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. above the waves 
When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start now.
bring these gifts as a sign of our gratitude and love, asking and trusting that you will take them and use them, that you will grant wisdom for their stewardship, that you will multiply them like loaves and fishes to meet every need according to your abundance and your riches in glory. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 13. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see only in a reflection, as in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love remain, these three, and the greatest of these is love. God bless us with understanding as we try to be doers and not just hearers of his word. Thank you. 
And all God's children said, amen, amen. What a glorious uh, weekend as we celebrate our nation's independence, as we gather as family of faith, as we gather in the return of the heat of summer, amen. Did you enjoy the reprieve? Yes. I know my voice is a little raspy. I've been ill with a stomach bug all week. So I am wearing a mask uh, after service to protect me because I'm not staying home another week with COVID because you gave it to me, amen. So just letting you know. So people wear masks for different reasons. We, I believe we're in this season as various diseases and illnesses come forth. We're gonna have to learn how to live and be fragile and gentle and resilient all at the same time. So I pray that you would uh, beg my pardon as I talk with you through my mask because I'm determined to be well. Also want to uh, just celebrate as Pastor Ken talked about camp. Uh, we had people on both sides of Disciples Crossing this week, uh, on the creative side, the primitive side, the creative side, and then the developed side, I mean, the other side. Um, so wonderful it is to be able to send our children and adults uh, to be present and to, to get away from all the hustle and bustle and to be one with God and to build community. So great job, Northway, on just finding ways as we're returning back to all of the amazing gifts and graces of what it means to be disciple and the ways in the summer in particular. Uh, so I hope that you will join us after service for our fellowship lunch. We have brats and hamburgers, so there's a crew cooking, and they will be ready to serve you. So please stay afterwards. If you're online, you'll have time to come on down. And uh, I won't be joining you on the water slide, but I'm gonna have fun watching you all spin on that water slide. Would you pray with me? For all the gifts, God, we are grateful. For the grace for which you have given us the gifts to share them not to hoard them, but to learn that in love, that it means everything. Thank you for the greatest gift of your love in Jesus Christ, and the body of Christ that we now are because of his great sacrifice. May this word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. In Christ's name, amen. I'm learning a lot. My grandmother, who went home to be with the Lord a couple of years ago at the tender age of 98, she was learning even her last week before she took her last breath, she said to us, I'm still learning. I'm learning particularly about two-year-old boys. My grandson, Aiden, is, is teaching me a lot every day. His new words are mine, my, and mines. I know that mines is not a word, but Aiden says it very well, so it's become a word uh, in our vocabulary. I'm, and, I, and I find myself tug of warring with the two year old. No mines, no mines. It's perfectly normal for a toddler to believe that everything is mine. As they begin to understand the concept of possession, they are also beginning to test boundaries and to gain independence. It's normal for a two-year-old to say mine and mines. That's normal. They are coming to understand that they are separate individuals from others and they are learning about themselves and their individual characteristic. It's perfectly normal for a two-year-old to say mines. It's perfectly normal for them to not want to share, and then you have to teach them how to share. Toddlers believe that almost everything is theirs. And so you begin to teach them empathy, and you begin to teach them understanding. Y'all, it's perfectly normal for a two-year-old, y'all got it, to say, minds. And there's strategies that we share with them to get them to, to grow beyond and to understand new boundaries. We offer them a plan. Before a play date, you let your child decide what's available for sharing. 
so that they know that everything will not be theirs. Or you teach them social skills. You help children learn how to ask for permission when they want to play with something instead of just grabbing it and saying, this is mine. Or you practice them, you have your child share with you, you go to the playground and you practice with them, you take turns learning this is mine right now and this is yours and who has ownership when. Or you praise them when they do share, oh Aiden, thank you. That's what Ava's saying to him when he, when he is holding onto her doll and he finally gives it to her. Thank you, great job, thumbs up. It's perfectly normal for a two-year-old to say mine. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Paul says, but as I became mature, I put my childish ways behind me. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. Because <laughs> we still want to say mine. Can I get a witness? It's in the sandbox of life. This is mine. This is my house, it's, it's, it's my card, it's my burger, this is my wine, I mean my communion, it's, this is mine. Yet Paul opens up this chapter that we say is about love, but it's really an overflow from chapter 12, the gifts of the Spirit. In verse 8 he says, love never ends. But as prophecies, which is a gift he mentions earlier, they will come to an end, and tongues, they will cease. And for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we only know in part, Paul says. And we only prophesy in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. And then he gets to when I was a child. I spoke like a child. He said, I thought like a child. I, I said minds a lot, like a child. And I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to my childish ways. Now, I'm not sure Paul fully did that. We have evidence that Paul had to continue to grow and mature in the faith and in life. For we now only see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, and then I'll be fully known. And now faith, hope, and love remain, but the greatest Paul says, is love. We have this, this knowledge, this understanding that's so hard to really believe and to grapple with because we only know in part. In fact, as we recognize what it means to be in this community, this toddler that grows into a, an adult, it, recognizing community is a very act of courage. Uh, it's an act of courage for Aiden to to share his applesauce with me this week. Whenever he sees me this week um, eating one of his applesauce, because that's one of the few items I can eat, and he's looking at it, and he's like, that's mine. Like, why are you eating my squeezy applesauce? Adults should not be eating applesauce. And I want to say amen. I shouldn't be. But this is what I need this week. And over the course of the week, guess who's been bringing me applesauce? Aiden, we, we have to teach, we have to so model for one another what it means and to recognize what community needs. He recognized his queen, that's the name they call me for grandma. He recognized that out of his love for me, the way to serve me was to bring me his applesauce. Now if a two-year-old can get it, we can do better as community. Can we get an amen? And this sentence here in verse uh, uh, really comes, um, again, as a continuation from chapter 12, these gifts of the Spirit. And we'll talk about more of the gifts next week. Um, but there's a sentence that, that we, we really need to understand. Paul says, we only know in part. And my grandma used to say it this way, you don't know what you don't know. We only know in part, but when we know better, we do better. And so there's some things that we know about life, some things we know about love, and things that we even know about our beloved country. And when we know better, we do better. And one of those things is a 
is, is how we understand our faith in the context of other faiths. I was in my sixth grade class, um, Mrs. Halpern at T.H. Rogers in Houston, Texas, that I, I really got this lesson. She was my social study skills teacher, and every time we had uh, social studies, uh, we would go to Ms. Halpern's class at T.H. Rogers, and every month there was a different country, and we would bring different food from the countries, and we loved that. But I remember in the first semester, we talked about different faith and different traditions. And you, what kind of food do you bring? Well, people begin to bring symbols, so I, I brought my cross. And I, and I shared the story of my faith. And we had Buddhists, and we had people from the Hindu faith, and people from the Jewish faith, and we even had agnostics. In this sixth grade social studies class, and then there was one other person that came up, and he talked about being Muslim. And he was as dark as I was. And at the end of class, we raised our hands, questions of each other's faith. And I raised my hand and I said, I thought all black people were Christian. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But as I became an adult, I put my childhood beyond me. It was in my sixth grade class that my world grew. Because we only know in part, Paul says, we only know what we know, and then when we know better, we do better. I begin to ask questions and to, to lean into curiosity, to ask him more about his faith tradition, and he asked me about mine, and then I went to a HBCU, and I found out that black people got all kinds of religions, and no religion too. And so do white Christians and white people. In Middle Eastern and Asian, my world was growing, not shrinking, as I fully understood what it meant to be in America, where we were free to worship, free to create spaces where so many other people can worship. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. I spoke like a child. But as I became an adult, I put those ways behind me. These are gifts that Paul is talking about, these, these gifts of love that need, need to be accompanied with love, prophecy, and giving everything that you can. These are gifts that Paul talks about. But he says one day those gifts will come to an end because we only see in a mirror dimly and then face to face. I thought that my seeing in a mirror dimly um, was already happening, but I didn't realize I needed to clean my window, my mirrors in my house. But um, bum it, it really is this, this self-awareness, this moment as we celebrate our country's independence, to be more reflective on what it means to only know in part, to only sense and understand just the part of what we know about who we are and where we are in light of the, the whole world. Oh, what it would have been like to be in the room as those, those founding framers of our country were breaking out of those 13 colonies to become one country with many states what it was like to be George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison and John Jay and Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, what it must have been like to be with those framers, but I'm really more interested in what it was like when they came home. And the wives say, y'all got that country together yet? This section and this letter that we know as a love letter, again, is more than a love letter. It is an overflow of the gifts of the Spirit and to understand that those gifts must be bound together with love. And how we out of that space are free to worship. Because when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But as I've matured, I had to grow in my capacity to love. I am... Um, taken by the opening song, both as I think about our beloved country, but also what it means to be Christian. 
Because my job as pastor is not to govern. It's not to legislate. My job as pastor and your job as Christian is to influence. It's to share our faith. I had no idea as this sixth grader what I would come to know and the gifts that I would get to share as I learned what it meant and the practices of what it meant to have Allah and one prophet and for that creed to be very important to them or for my Jewish friends, for them to, to recite the, the Shema even on their deathbeds if they're able and to, for them to have that creed. But for us, as we reconnect the community as as disciples, we have no creed but Christ. We have no book but the Bible. We have no law but love and no name but the divine. It's part of what it means for us to reconnect to community. It's part of the early Stone Campbell um, slogan, no, no, no creed but Christ, no book but the Bible, no law but love, no name but but the divine, it's, it's who we are at our best. And, and, and I love it the way that our former GMP, the Reverend Dr. Sharon Watkins says it, as she reminds us, we only know in part and we only, only see in part. Um, she says, we're a movement of wholeness in a fragmented world, reminding us that you're not the only one that's cracked up. <laughs> you're not the only one that's fragile that our world is fragmented and our job is to bring wholeness, our job is to bring unity. I, in fact, we talk about unity as our polar star. It, it points us towards something. And so then, how do we reconcile all of these fractions? How do we do this in love, as Paul says? Another slogan that's introduced to us by Thomas Campbell, one of the disciples founders, where the scriptures speak, we speak. Where the scriptures are silent, we are silent. Well, kinda. <laughs> because we also are taught to wrestle with the text. We're, we're taught to share and, and, to, and, and as we know better, we do better. And so if I have some questions that raise up in the text, then we, we bring that to bear. I was looking at my family reunion that's happening in Brazoria, Texas, and I was sharing with Rod earlier, my family toured the plantation where my great, great, great grandparents were slaves. And then I saw a picture of my, grand, my great grandfather, Benjamin, who I knew. He died at the age of 105. I knew him. And he fought in World War I as a, as a black man, as a freed black man, of course. And so when we know better, we do better. Our country only knew in part, and then it began to see face to face. This is not just about our country. This is very rooted in our tradition. We see this in the Deuteronomies. We see this in Numbers, that Moses was the only one that able to see the backside of God. It was so much glory and live because he wanted to see God face to face that ultimately that this face to face encounter is about the one who created us, about the one who redeemed us, about the one who freed us. And so we're free to worship. So we free others to worship so that we can see him face to face. And so I think about those slaves and of my ancestry. And I, I think about those as they began to become tighter and more united as a country. And as we have opened up these United States, as fragile as we are, may we see the one face to face. I believe that we're called to re-engage community in, in brand new ways to re-engage community, uh, 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 again, from the early stone uh, movement, um, and essentials unity, and non-essentials liberty, and in all things charity. That we focus on who we are together, not who we are separate. And that we give some freedom 
and some things. You might not like the color of carpet. We got, we got to give some freedom. Amen. And, and so we find ways to, to do this and non-essentials. We find ways to have collaborative worship services with faith traditions that are different than us so that we may see the one God. Amen. We find ways in our non-essentials to find some liberty and in all things, some charity, some love with one another. And so that's why when there is a hostage situation across town at a Jewish synagogue, we all start fasting and praying. That's why when our Muslim brothers and sisters are struggling and we see that hostage take up, that's why we start praying and fasting and protesting for some unity because we believe that there is one who is greater than all of us, that we are free to worship. And so we find ways that others are also free to worship. This is my song, the opening song today says, of God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands as far as mine. This is my home. I love me the United States, y'all. I, I just love, I love to be an American. Well, at least I no, uh, free. okay. I was going to do some Bruce Springs thing, but y'all not ready. This country is where my heart is. It's where my hopes and my dreams and my holy shrines are. I, I love the United States. But there are other hearts. And there are other lands that are beating with hopes and dreams as high as mine. And so you want to know what keeps me up at night? All of this fighting. All of this division. The left and the right. The Democrats and the Republicans. I don't know where I feel like the spirit of my grandmother. I say, oh, y'all sit down and take a nap. <laughs> because we have children who only know in part. When they were children, me and mine's worked. But as we become adults, it's time to put that behind us. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. As we stand and sing today's hymn of invitation, if you're looking for a church home, I would love to be your pastor. And Northway would love to be your church family. Let us stand and sing today's hymn. <laughs> of who we are is not to worship our country. But we are free to worship in this country. If you notice that it said in servanthood that who we are at our core are servants. 
servants of the one who created us, servants of the one who redeemed us, servants of the one who sustains us and calls us. And so as we leave this place and never from that place, as Americans, as those who have come to this country um, and their own citizenship, may we learn to be better hosts, free others to be who they are in God and to share that in love. As you go from this place and never from the presence of Christ, may you go in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Have a great fourth and don't go messing up anybody else's. In Jesus' name, amen.